Let's talk about sketchbooks. This video is not sponsored by any of the companies mentioned. Hey there, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Shanna Rowe Jackson, also known as Caution Artist at Play on social media. I am a fine artist who likes to work in a variety of media, and on this channel, we like to talk all things art. Everything from art supply hauls to reviews to tutorials and different tips and tricks involving pretty much any art topic that I can think of. So if that's something that interests you, feel free to hit the subscribe button and stick around so that you can join the fun. Okay, now let's talk about sketchbooks. I am going to be addressing five different things that I think you need to consider when you are getting ready to buy your next sketchbook. Today, I am working in my Jane Davenport art journal. This was a really, really fun sketchbook that I bought forever ago, so it may not be as easy to find, but I will try to link it in the description below. And I am using the Karen Dosh Studio Gouache pans, and they're very convenient, very fun. And I'm just painting some Hosta because it's winter here, and... I don't like it. I want something green. And so I'm painting some hostas from a photo I took over the summer in my yard. And so let's get down to what we need to think about when we're getting ready to buy our next sketchbook. The first thing that I like to think about is the paper type. This is very important. What kind of artist are you? Do you like to work with mixed media like I do? So like you need a paper that can hold up to a variety or are you a pencil artist? So you need something smooth that can still handle enough layers so that you can blend and get the depth that you want. Are you somebody who works with watercolor? So you need something that's not going to buckle. This is very important. So you want to find a paper that can handle any type of medium that you plan on throwing at it. And so you obviously want a heavier weight paper if you're going to be working with water media and you also want to consider paper texture as well. Some sketchbooks come with cold press watercolor paper. Some come with hot press. Some are like a mixed media, which is kind of in between. This particular book that I'm working in has paper that is smooth on one side and then the next sketchbook spread is rough and it goes like every other. And so it really gives me the opportunity to work with a bunch of different media. And so these are all things that you really want to consider. If you work with markers, you want something that is made specifically to work with markers because as we know, markers will show through more easily. And so just think that over and decide which paper you think that you're going to get the most out of. The next thing that I like to look at is size. If you are somebody who has a hard time working large, you may want to go with a smaller sketchbook. I'm kind of a sucker for punishment, so this this time I decided to go with a 9 by 12 However, I do think smaller sketchbooks can be more convenient because you're not going to take as long to do pieces in a small sketchbook. And so we want the sketchbook process to be enjoyable. We don't want it to be a stressful place. Sketchbooks are a great place to play, to explore, and just to come to be creative without any inhibitions. And so if it's going to feel like a chore because of the size, then you want to make sure that you are choosing the size that makes you excited to come to every day. So this one, like I said, is a little bit large because I wanted a challenge after the last one that I worked on, which was probably like a six by eight, which I do feel like, like, especially when I was working on this, this took me a lot longer than it would have if I was working in my old sketchbook. And so that is something to consider. Also, if you are somebody who likes to do plain air work or, you know, you like to sketch on site and do urban sketching and things like that, you may want to consider having a smaller sketchbook so that you can have something more compact that you can put into your bag with the rest of your travel supplies. So think about the size that you are more likely to work in. If you think, well, I really love that beautiful 9 by 12 but I have a feeling that I'm not going to work in it because of the size, then don't go for that size. Find something that you know that you're going to show up for that isn't going to cause you to feel intimidated or not want to create that day because you just don't have the time. The next thing that you may want to consider when you are getting ready to buy your next sketchbook is the format. Do you like to work in a portrait format or do you prefer a landscape format? Also, they have fun shapes like square. So 
You know, it's really up to you and personal preference. Personally, I'm really liking the fact that this is a portrait format, but that you can work on both sides of the pages because with this one, I'm able to open the book up. And if I want to do a full page spread like this, then I'm able to work in a landscape format. However, if I do want to do a portrait shaped artwork, then I can just use one page instead and just have two separate pieces on each page. So this kind of allows me the the ability to do both. And so I'm really liking that. My last sketchbook had been a, it was a landscape format and I always found it a little weird to turn it so that I could make it a portrait. And then it was just hard when I wanted to do my my flip through. If you just want to flip through the pages after, because then I kept having to turn the book. I don't know. That's something that I think about when I'm doing these things. It may not be something that you're worried about. And like I said, there's other formats as well, like square. However, if you're working in a square, you really have to consider your composition because you want to make sure that whatever you're painting or drawing fits well within the square, and that can kind of limit you compositionally. So these are just things to consider. Of course, you're always welcome to have more than one sketchbook that brings you different things. Most of us do, but just something to consider ahead of time before you're buying. Square can absolutely be fun and it can be a fun challenge compositionally, but just think about it before you buy. The next thing that I think about, number four, would be the binding. I know a lot of people who swear by using spiral bound sketchbooks because you can just flip the page very easily. The other page is right out of the way. You can work flat and it's, you know, it's very convenient. However, some people don't like the look of it. Like this one is a hardbound sketchbook. So when it sits on the shelf, it's going to fit in with my books nicely. It's going to look like part of the library and it's going to be beautiful when it's on the shelf. And so aesthetic wise, a hardbound sketchbook might be the way to go, especially one like this where I was able to paint the cover. And I do have a video for that on my channel. If you want to see how I designed this cover, I had a blast. But again, this comes down to personal preference. Something else to consider when it comes to binding is does the sketchbook lay flat? This one lays really flat for me so far. The, I'm not very far into it, but so far it has laid very flat for me, which is very convenient because you don't want the pages flipping over on you when you're trying to work and getting in the way of your hand, especially me. I'm a lefty. You also don't want them to flip closed before it's dry or anything like that. Plus, it's like just working on a regular painting. You don't have to worry about it. And so a lay flat is usually the preference of many artists. So kind of look into that, especially if you're buying online. You can look up reviews of different sketchbooks ahead of time and see if they lay flat, if that is something that you are concerned about. Okay, so number five is the extras. Now, this is not necessarily a necessity. But it could be something that could make or break your decision to buy because it could just be add a little bit of fun to your sketchbook. A lot of people love to use their sketchbook as travel journals and things like that. Some sketchbooks come with pockets built in so you can put different train tickets in there before you get the chance to, you know, collage them into your sketchbook or put just different art supplies and items in there that you know you're going to be using. So pockets, always fun. I mean... Come on now, who doesn't like pockets? And then also, you know, you have the things like ribbons that tie them closed to make it more aesthetically beautiful. You have the ribbons that can go inside to mark your place. Some sketchbooks come with a cover page where you can put your name for a personalized touch. Some sketchbooks come with colored paper, so you can get either a specific color or you can get sketchbooks that have multicolored paper in it. Some have fun cover designs or covers that you can design yourself, which is fun and adds a little personal touch. Some may even come with an art supply or two. There are all kinds of ways that you can find a sketchbook that speaks to you and your creativity and inspires you just by looking at the features either in the reviews online or when you're shopping in store, pick it up, get a feel for it. Again, not every sketchbook is going to have these things, but it could be a really cool bonus 
And I will try to link some good options below. I have to say, I am somebody who, like many artists, I started out in the sketchbook when I was young, but I got away from it for a very long time. So I am still on my journey to find my favorite kind of sketchbooks to work with. I had worked in a watercolor sketchbook just before this one, like I said, that was a lot smaller. Now this one has the mixed media paper that I'm really, really enjoying because I work in a variety of media, as I mentioned. So this one is in gouache, but I've already worked with marker and colored pencil on a couple of the other pages and some watercolor on my first page. And so I really am just exploring again. I am just now starting to regularly work in sketchbooks again. And so these are things that I've been thinking about as I have been trying to get back into sketchbooking, if that makes sense. So let us know in the comments below. What are your favorite sketchbooks to work with? Do you have a sketchbook that you go back to and buy over and over again and time and time again? Those of you who work in in sketchbooks regularly, let us know because, again, I'm always curious about new sketchbooks and things like that because, obviously, eventually I plan on finishing this one and I may move on. And... I did look this up on the Jane Davenport website because I couldn't find it on Amazon anymore. And it looks like the price has risen. And when I bought it on Amazon, I could have sworn it considered like it was considered a mixed media sketchbook. But on her site, it's considered a watercolor sketchbook. And it talks about being hot press, which I think is really weird because this has a mix of cold press and hot press textured paper in it. So I'm not sure if it's the same. But I do have to say it has risen in price, so I will link that in the description below. But it is kind of pricey now, and so I don't I don't really know what happened there. But I do love it. But because of the price hike and things like that, I'm not sure if I'll buy it again or not. We'll have to see once I'm done. But yeah, so let us know what your favorite sketchbooks are below. And I hope that these five tips have helped you kind of think about what you want in a sketchbook. There are so many different options in the stores that it can be really hard to make a decision. And so really it comes down to what kind of artist you are, what you want to do in your sketchbook, if you want to be experimental or if you want to do finished pieces. All these things are kind of factored into your decision making. But I hope that this video has helped you so that you can make a more informed decision next time you decide to invest in a new sketchbook. All right, so we are nearing the end of this piece. I hope that you have enjoyed watching this. It was just kind of fun and playful, and it really made me feel the summer vibes again, which I need since it is so snowy out right now. And as always, I really appreciate your support and you watching my content. I will see you next week. You have a wonderful day. Bye.